John Williams' work deserves to be at the forefront of every economic conversation. As an economist with an MBA from Dartmouth, John has consistently demonstrated the courage to stand up and call out the flaws in today's economic systems, even when few fully grasp the issues or the significance of their insights. He is a personal hero of mine for his unwavering commitment to truth, always backed by irrefutable evidence. In this webinar, my goal is to make these complex topics not only accessible, but also compellingly transforming frustration into a deeper understanding. So I just wanted to get a real good understanding of your background and why these why what you do is so relevant and so important to everybody in the country. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you got involved with challenging the government's numbers? Well, uh, I've been, I got out of the uh, tech business school in, in uh, 1972 and went to work in a family business uh, <clears throat> related to the chainsaw industry. I'd gotten into econometric modeling at uh, at Tuck, and um, I did applied that to uh, industries. And uh, but I found that the uh, it, where the economic numbers uh, could be uh, could be estimated as time went on, there were, there were gimmicks that were added into the system, both for the uh, economic statistics such as the GDP. Uh, but most importantly, with the inflation numbers, um, starting in the uh, early 1980s, where the uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, started to, to redefine the consumer price index. I mean, if you're going to have something like the consumer price index, you want to have it have it consistent on a on a on an historical basis, so that the numbers that you have are comparable. But what the government started doing in the uh, early 80s was making changes that um, lowered the the headline um, headline inflation. The problem came in the early 80s when there was a, uh, a very large uh, adjustment to, uh, coming to Social Security uh, because the CPI came in higher than expected. And um, that was at, at that point in time, the Congress moved to uh, recalculate the CPI to find a way of reducing it uh, so that the they'd have more money to spend down the road and, and from a deficit standpoint as opposed to having it encroached by rising inflation, uh, increasing the Social Security payments in, in, in line with, with the actual CPI. And uh, the changes started in 1982 uh, there have been a number of uh, redefinitions. The first redefinition uh, subtracted uh, roughly one and a half percentage point from the annual CPI. At that time, they uh, they used to have a, a, an estimate of the cost of buying a house. Uh, they redefined it as um, consumer's equivalent rent, what, what you would pay to rent the house to yourself. Uh, by and then how much that rent would be increased and that had, that had the effect of knocking one and a half percentage point off the headline CPI. There have been a number of changes since then over 30, uh, 30 plus years and uh, right now that aggregate change is um, is up around uh, eight percentage points so that where they reported the last headline CPI at around two and a half percent, there's really closer to ten and a half percent the way it used to be calculated. That's all been aggregated over time. So, John, the significance of under um, calculating or coming in with a lower number has devastating effects in the private sector because it has a lot to do with when people who are middle income and lower income people get raises, those raises are based on a bogus statistic called the CPI. That is correct. So if they get a raise of two and a half percent and their cost of living is up 8%, yep. they're being you know, spit on by about you know six, 7%. And that means that they're, they're getting further behind all the time. Isn't that that's, a big problem? That's true. That is a big problem. 
Um, and I think the average guy feels that he's not making ends meet the way, way he used to, depending upon his, his income circumstance. But if you're living on a fixed income and it's being adjusted for inflation, uh, you should, my, my betting is you're finding it increasingly difficult to make ends meet. So we just had Social Security for 2025 is going to be adjusted by 2.5%. Yeah. Anybody who believes their cost of living increase is only 2.5%. I mean, uh-huh. got something else coming. Um, what yeah, do you- I'd, I'd, put, I'd put it up around 10.2%, 10. 10. 10.3% that it should have gone up by. That's, that's, how, that's how much this has changed over time. When they first made the change, the, the initial, the initial uh, estimate, uh, the, and uh, let, let me just back off a little bit here. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has been straightforward with the fact that it's readjusted its numbers. And when it makes a readjustment, it estimates the effect of the, the adjustment. I use their, I use their uh, estimate of how much it has changed. In the, fir- the first go round. What they did was uh, they used to be able, they used to measure the uh, cost of owning a house. And um, they'd look at uh, the actual cost of, uh, of, of buying a house, what, what, what housing prices were. When they, when they redefined it, they redefined it as to the measuring the cost of, uh, uh, of uh, sorry, they um, when when they redefined it, they they knocked a percentage off the uh, the, the headline adjustment for the uh, the housing cost to, uh, to to bring it in line with. Uh, I'm sorry. I can we just pause here a second, Ed? I'm, I, I I just lost my train of thought. My apology. That's okay. We can, we'll get back to it. For those of you who have questions for John, feel free to go to the chat feature or the Q&A feature on the bottom and uh, ask a question. You can type it in and I'll ask John the question. Um, but in terms of the manipulation of the CPI, it's not just housing. It also has to do with hamburgers versus steak and mm-hmm. chaotic. I think that's the word. Um, yes. Changes. Well, the, the 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 initial the initial change was made with the housing, and the, the cost there, the government estimated it would knock one and a half percentage point off the consumer price index, which it did. And um, every change after that that they made, the 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 Bureau of Labor Statistics would publish a, a report saying, "Well, here's here's how we've readjusted it, and this is the effect that we." Uh, estimate that it has on the headline CPI. And of the 20 plus changes that have been made, every single one of them has had, has reduced the headline CPI. It hasn't increased it. It's always been designed at re- reducing that cost of living adjustment for Social Security that uh, uh, that keeps the, uh, the the budget spending up. And the, uh, the aggregate over the years, and what I've done is I've taken every change that they've made and added back in what they what they're taking out, and that's where I come up with that ten percentage point. That's the amount that they have deducted, aggregate, over that period of time, and that that comes out each each aggregate. This happens every year, so that the, you, you're looking out an aggregate of ten uh, percent plus, and um, that's what that's what you're shy. Um, instead of instead of the excuse me that ten percent. It does. It does include, let's say, this this two and a half percent, this two point four for the CPI, but two and a half percent for the CPIU, which is slightly different than the CPIW that they use for the the uh, Social Security. So you take that out, you're seeing an over an another statement, uh, you know, of eight, let's say eight percentage points in terms of of what's not being increased each year, and that's that's a meaningful number. So, so John, you're you're very soft spoken, and I want people to understand the anger that is is inside me because you have Social Security that is being understated by about yes. eight hundred basis points. That, that means, is correct. That means you know grandparents. That's why grandparents' presents get worse every single year during Christmas time because they're being slapped in the face 
by about 8%, 800 basis points. It also yep. impacts pension plans. For those of you who have pension plans, and those pension plans get raises based on uh, the CPI. But also more importantly, and the one that really gets me, are the people who are middle income, lower income, whose salary increases are based on the CPI. So they'll go into a meeting and they'll say, you did a really good job. Inflation is, is this. We're going to give you 1% better than inflation. And people think that they're getting ahead, but they're not getting ahead. They're actually falling further behind because of the bogus statistic. That's absolutely correct. And, and this is a major, major issue. John, when you have talked about this uh, in public forums uh, to people in, in the administration and Congress, what kind of feedback do you get from people? Well, the uh, the the government is that's what the government does, and the Congress was behind it. Uh, I, I have talked with people in Congress who are frustrated by it. Uh, they they know what's going on. It is um, it's more in the private sector. Let me put it this way: the at the time, the Congress saw, my goodness, we're not going to be able to do as much deficit spending next year because. Uh, we're going to have to shell out more for Social Security. How can we contain that? It was done deliberately to reduce the Social Security adjustments. Uh, it's all documented. Uh, it's out there, the, the the congressional testimony. In fact, I think Newt, Newt Gingrich uh, made some comment to the uh, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Gee, if you can just find a way to uh, reduce this, we might be able to find more money for the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and and and, and they and they did. So so let's let's switch from the CPI to the GDP. Um, I've always been told, and tell me if I'm wrong, that the GDP deflator plays mm -hmm. a major role in the calculation of the GDP. So GDP is a measure of the gross domestic product, and the right. government has a goal to make that around two and a half to three percent a year. Yep. And if it goes too much higher than that, then they'll raise interest rates to slow it down. And if it goes much lower, they'll try to lower interest rates to stimulate it. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how they manipulate that number. Well, again, it's uh, it's it's not the CPI. The CPI is uh, unique to the consumer uh, inflation estimates that uh, are, are are used in those adjustments and. It's also it's also used a lot by a lot of businesses. Um, the gross the, the gross domestic product uh, doesn't have the same weightings as a person's consumption, and the government uh, works out estimates of the of the of the components and the, uh, the deflator the inflation rate used to um, take the nominal GDP the, before it's adjusted for inflation inflation and to restate it in an, on an inflation-adjusted basis, which is the way it's headlined, so that you, what you get in terms of the headline growth is uh, net net of inflation. Um, that's not as bad as the uh, uh, headline CPI, but it's it's it's, per, it's pretty close to it. Again, that the, the GDP deflator is uh, not used not used as widely as the uh, consumer price index. Um, but it it is also is uh, is understated and and the nice thing about understating inflation and from a standpoint of someone who's looking to play around with the numbers you take a, a nominal number number before inflation adjustment and you want to uh, you want to see what it looks like after inflation you, you you have your inflation number and whether it's the cpi or the implicit price deflator that they use for the gdp which is a, the the equivalent concept and you take you, you divide the the current dollar so headline dollar numbers that you have right now by that uh, deflator and the uh, higher that deflator is uh, the weaker the resulting uh, inflation adjusted growth real growth as it's as it's called by by economist so so, so is the, the PLS, it's is overstated the the, the, GD, the gdp inflator actually the gdp Inflator is understated. The, the 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 inflation there is understated, but the uh, d deflator itself is overstated. 
So can the Bureau of Labor Statistics just pull whatever uh, in GDP deflator number they want? Well, the the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the the GDP deflators worked out by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, I believe. They're the ones who report the the um, the, the gross domestic gross domestic product. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has been through a very careful um, recalculation of uh, many of their numbers to bring them in line with their their CPI concept, and they've documented it all. And they say, "Here's the here's what it here's what it uh, used to used to be. Here's what we're showing now." I mean, there, there's a difference here of because of the way we've changed the definition of three tenths of a percent to the aggregate consumer price index or something like that. That that you can aggregate the and and that's where I come up with my estimate of the shortfall right now of about eight percentage points on the CPI. With the GDP, it's um, there's a lot more going on with the gimmicking of the GDP than just the deflator, although the deflator's part of it. I mean they they the CPI comes into that and that it, it gets understated because of partially because of the CPI, which means you're seeing overstated real or inflation adjusted growth. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, assumptions made in the GDP that uh, re result in it, uh, in, in it uh, not being really an accurate measure of the, of, of the economy. Um, and it's often, right now, I would contend that we're in an inflationary uh, recession, effectively depression. Uh, but the inflation is suppressed and the economic activity is overstated. And um, if you're looking at the the real you're looking at the real uh, GDP because of the part of part of what's done with the GDP is 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 the uh, understatement of inflation and the implicit price deflator. Um which has a number of sources as it gets worked through. Part of it is is done with uh, the way they define elements of the uh, of of the GDP. It's um, let me let me give you an example of where things right now look really out of whack. The headline gross domestic product total U.S. economy, road economy, covers supposedly covers everything. Year to year growth is um, roughly uh, three percentage points. Reasonably good, three three to three and a half is where they've been running it. Um, but that's that's the total economy. So you look at the, the, the total economy is a sum of all the elements in it. So you look at, say, re retail sales, but you have to adjust them for inflation. Look at industrial production. You look at the cash freight index. Um, you you put together the different components of the economy. I mean, the, those those are I just mentioned three major elements. Um, they're flat to minus year over year. They're not up three percent. And those those numbers are are reasonably accurate. Some of the other numbers are have issues. But the, if you look at the components that uh, make up the GDP. You're not seeing any growing the numbers that are growing at a three percent year-over-year growth. Um, I'm going to be putting out a piece on, on that in uh, about uh, two weeks, uh, pull, pulling it apart. But the GDP numbers are just a fantasy. Uh, it's it's a construct of the Bureau of Economic Ana Analysis, and they have all sorts of numbers that they put put together in it. But there's no way that you can be having three percent year-over-year growth in the economy. When you're having zero to negative year-to-year -year growth in things such as industrial production and retail sales, uh, and and this this has been a, an issue for some time. It's the the GDP is really a a fantasy hype number for as best I can figure. So for those of you who are on, if you have any questions for um, Mr. Williams, please go to the chat feature or the Q and A down below. Also, uh, Mr. Williams is website is called shadowstats.com and it's a subscription base and he sends out fantastic information every single week 
And as though this stuff seems kind of wonky and honestly kind of boring, to uh, be honest with you, um, it's really, really interesting because this is this goes to the core of the manipulation that the government does. And it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat. This happens with both parties because they're both trying to manipulate the numbers to make them seem lower, uh, especially the CPI, so they don't have to pay out as much in entitlement programs. Uh and that's, you know, that's another just, it just kills me to think about how many people are being manipulated when it go when they go to, you know, buy something at the grocery store, and they're being told that their costs have only gone up two and a half percent. And you can just look at, you know, just just a bagel, if you went and got a bagel, every single day, uh, it, it goes up about 15 cents a day, that's $53 more a year. Um, if you bought a bagel every single day, um, it's just, it's just, that's the kind of way to look at this is the constant, you know, killing of your purchasing power. Um, so, so John, what, what numbers are, do you find the most interesting and the ones that are the most devastating to people who are watching right now and listening? Well, the, uh, uh, the, the, probably the, the best number out there right now is Consumer Sentiment, which is uh, published by the uh, University of uh, Michigan. It's uh, widely recognized by the National Bureau of Economic Research. So they're the people. National Bureau of Economic Research is not a government entity, although they're very close to the government. And they're the ones who define um, whether or not the economy's in recession. Um and normally, when you have a booming economy, you'll see that uh, consumer sentiment is booming as well. It hasn't. Cons con consumer sentiment has never recovered its pre-pandemic peak. Once when the pandemic hit, consumer sentiment uh, crashed, um, and it's still down uh, something like uh, 20 percent from uh, pre-pandemic levels. It, the, the economy has not recovered yet. And the uh, the National Bureau of Economic Research, which is again the uh, defining authority on, on on headline recessions, uh, put out just put out a paper on, gee, why is the consumer sentiment not recovering when usually it recovers when we're, we're when we're in economic re recovery? And um, what they found, um, and I'm, uh, you've got to look at the paper to to get a full full picture here. But the gist of what they found was that the because of the the redefinitions to the consumer price index back in the 1980s, certain things uh, were were not uh, not properly represented, and uh, so you, you're seeing skewed numbers there that, uh, as they work through to the consumer sentiment, actually, uh, excuse me, as they work through to the economy boosted the economy, but the, the consumer sentiment, which is independent of the, the government's numbers, um, reflects what the average guy is actually feeling and, and didn't show, doesn't show, what the um, what the government's been reporting in terms of, of inflation and such. And as a sentiment has uh, been recognized over time as a, a very high quality leading indicator of, of economic activity, inflation, recessions, recoveries, and it's never recovered. Um, so it is, by, uh, I'm sorry. By the, by the way, the check feature apparently does not work right now. Um, I don't know how to uh, make it so it's not disabled. So if you have a question, go to the Q&A and I can get it there. Um, so, so, so John, you talk mainly about the United States, but internationally, do you have any views on the inflation rate over all around the world and what's bringing that up so high? Well, it's, uh, I'm not a student of the, all the, all the inflation rates as I am of what, of the U.S. numbers, but I think you, you gen, in, in some instances you'll get similar uh, misestimation, mis misestimations as you do um, with the U.S., those are probably closest to the U.S., but uh, I'm not aware of any country that is uh, 
uh, taken it as the U.S. has to deliberately uh, cut cut uh, uh, government overhead in terms of uh, what they have to pay out in cost of living adjustments to people on something like Social Security. I'm, I'm not aware of a direct parallel to that. Well, kind of diving into your economic background, the amount of debt that we have in this country, yes. um, you know, it's $35 trillion. Yep. And we bring in about $4 trillion in uh, revenue, but we spend $6 trillion yep. or $7 trillion. So we're just going to continue to add that, de that deficit to our debt. Yep. What are your thoughts on how we're going to be impacted negatively from this long-term debt? Well, we're, it's, it's an issue behind uh, the actual inflation. I mean, the, the, the more uh, money that you're printing and you have to print the money to cover the, the debt, the, the, the generally the higher the inflation and the, the, the dollar is being debased, uh, whether or not the inflation is being reported. The average guy recognizes as he's, I mean, he's he's not he's not making ends meet the way he used to, and he should be making ends meet if um, if his income is being adjusted uh, for, for the uh, actual inflation. Uh, I think we're headed for a, a very high inflation rate, uh, very bad economy, uh, a very strong inflationary recession ahead of us. Neither of which are uh, being recognized in, in, the, uh, in the in the current circumstance. Let me see if I have this right. So what you're saying is that we're going to have to print more money. And as we print more money, it devalues the dollars we already have. That's correct. So this is kind of a, a cycle that unless it gets stopped somehow, it's just going to continue to unravel. And the dollars that we have will be worth less and will buy us far less. Yeah, and that worthless be will become worthless at some point in time. Um, what what um, the the offset to this and what I'm seeing happen here now, uh, which was uh, it's been a long time coming, but it's very interesting to fo to follow. Um, when they started, uh, when the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Congress, federal government, started uh, to uh, reestimate uh, the the cost of living adjustments back in the early 1980s with redefinitions. Uh, they, they published as they went along, again, the effects. I worked out my estimate, my, what I call the shadow stats, alternate CPI, based on re reversing those effects to approximate what you'd be seeing with the CPI had they not made these changes. And um, when you look at my indices over time, and I do plot them, and I'm happy to send a copy of the, what I'm about to discuss here to anyone who's interested. Um, if you look at my, if you plot the price of gold against the consumer price index, it tends to follow the consumer price index um, into the early 80s, but when it's when it's been floated. Um, and as the uh, as the inflation hits. You'll find that the, uh, the the price of gold. I mean, as, as the inflation gets manipulated, you'll find that the price of gold tends to rise above the inflation. But if you look at the at the headline inflation, if you look at my inflation numbers, um, my, my my inflation numbers were ahead of the price of gold, but now all of a sudden the price of gold is catching up to up to my inflation numbers, and um, it is I, I think a confirmation that the what we're seeing with the uh, th those those numbers is that the uh, and indeed the you've had that deflation you, you've had the uh, not to, not the deflation but the uh, say, say the uh, degradation of the inflation numbers over time it, it, it again tends to confirm it if you look at where the numbers should be which would be what I've tried to estimate with my inflation number. The gold prices coincidentally are running right at this pretty much at the same level as my index. It's just that the, 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 they're, they happen to be at the same level as purely a coincidence, but they keep moving together. And um, I, th I think that what you're seeing with the gold is indeed a, 
uh, a fair estimation of what's actually happening with inflation. The markets are adjusting for that now. And um, so that if you're looking to to beat the actual uh, inflation, uh, to, to maintain a, a constant purchasing power in, in the, in the w- way that actual inflation was measured, um, the price of gold seems to be moving along along with the uh, with the indicator and uh, indeed seems to be fulfilling its its traditional role as sort of a store a store of wealth against inflation. Um, yeah, in the people don't understand that every time a number is out there, you know, people will listen in in the morning and they'll say the CPI number was released or the GDP number was released or uh, retail spending was released. They have to understand how significant this is and they should go to shadow stats and get your information john um uh, so alan has a question says they have actively worked to lower the yearly adjustment taking the social security money out of the trust fund yet they have a cap on medicare contributions what is the rationale for limiting the amount available to medicare especially from high income executives uh a good, good, good question. I can't, I can't give you a, a good answer on that. It's uh, other, other than uh, if you're looking for consistency in the terms of, uh, in terms of government uh, uh, policies and the way they handle their numbers, I, I, I've yet to find it. Okay, so uh, Alan, you can email me, and I'll try to find out that answer for you. And anybody who wants to sign up to get shadow stats, send me an email and I'll forward it to John and uh, he can get you uh, signed up. There is a subscription fee, um, but it's well, well worth it. He's very inexpensive. I promise you. Could I make a quick comment here? Sure. Uh, Because you you mentioned uh, my website. My website actually collapsed a year ago. And uh, this is shadowstats.com. I leave it up there because it has 20 years worth of archives in it. Um, and you can see everything that has been written up through that point in time. It also shows you the uh, um, the background to all the, the alternate measures on the consumer price index and the GDP and how they've, how they've tracked over time. Uh, I'm in the process of rebuilding the site, um, but what I'm doing with subscribers and, uh, and again, anyone who'd be interested in subscribing is that I'm setting them up with a uh, setting them up by email, and I'm sending out email emailed uh, subscriber only links that take you to the uh, commentaries as well as uh, uh, any uh, alternate data files I put up. I have alternate estimates of uh, the, the consumer price index, the the the, the, the GDP, um, the unemployment, and um, the, CP, the CPI is probably the most important one, and it's the one that is beginning to prove out with other numbers that are, are, are coming out of um, independent entities. Well, John, I really love having you on, and I love your knowledge. And for those of you watching, it's really important to understand how devastating the under um, calculation of the CPI is to Social Security recipients, people who get pension plans. And those people whose salary increases are based on inflation. And this is something that everybody needs to talk about. And John, you should have a, 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 a you should be up in front of Congress begging everybody to listen, because this is one of the great destructions of this country is the manipulation of the CPI. And it just doesn't get enough attention. So I really applaud you for your work, sir. Well, th- thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you for having me. And, uh, Congress is the was an entity that set up the the, the, the mechanics of this, but uh, uh, always a pleasure to to to, to be with you. I, I thank you. Thank you very much. Take care.